Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a quick review on these Hitachi slash now newer Metabo 15 gauge finish nailers. These are what I use day in, day out, have for years. They're absolute workhorses, but there's a couple modifications you can make to these guns to make them even better. I wanna show you that in this video. Okay, so a quick review on why I think these nailers are awesome. First off, they shoot a DA style 15 gauge nail. If you're nailing on raw wood like I do, sometimes really thick baseboard and casing, you need holding power when you nail it off to the wall. And these DA style finish nails are what you're gonna want for that. They do sometimes leave a little bit larger hole, but I'm gonna show you how to make these guns leave a smaller hole later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Second thing that is huge, for a 15 gauge nailer for me is the tip. You want to have a larger surface area rubber tip versus the more smart point style tips. This will allow you to bump fire as you go along and nail stuff off. Whereas with those smart tip nailers, if you try and bump fire, they're gonna leave a dent in the wood. Uh, I really prefer these large rubber tips on a 15 gauge nail. One of the other things that I love about these nailers is the way the back is designed. This here is where the exhaust port is, where it lets excess air shoot out whenever you fire the gun. This is adjustable so you can change the direction that that exhaust air shoots out. That's really important because when you're nailing off baseboard and your floor is covered with dust and especially drywall dust, you don't wanna be constantly kicking up a cloud of dust in your face as you nail things off. So I always orient this so that the exhaust shoots out the back, up the side of my arm, because I find that orientation is usually not going directly down at the floor and I kick up less dust when I'm nailing things off. Another feature I love on this gun is something very simple, but it's got an exhaust air blower port right here. You'll see a button right here. So out of this tiny hole, if you wanna blow something off or blow yourself off at the end of the day, uh, just to clean that sawdust off of you, you can push this button and it shoots a lot of air out here. So many times at the end of the day, I wanna clean myself off or just randomly throughout the day, clean myself off. I'll take that and you can kind of get yourself clean pretty quick. Last key point before we get into the modifications, as you can see, I mean, I beat the daylights out of these guns and they last me a really long time in general. Um, how many nails can you shoot with one of these guns? I did some quick math and I would say I shoot at least probably about a half million nails through one of these guns in their life cycle. Figure about 10,000 nails per house on average and they basically go probably four or five years before I have to replace them. It's about a half million nails. Um, so when you consider the price that you pay for these guns, the amount of shots that you get and the life you get out of them, they're a tremendous ROI. I think they're a great value overall. So guys, as professional finished carpenters, it is all about the small details that matter. And I just mentioned that over the life of these, I think I shoot around a half million nails. That's a half million nail holes that the painter has to fill. So if I'm over driving the nails and creating a larger hole than there needs to be, that's half a million holes that are twice the size that they need to be. Half a million holes that are potentially visible after paint, whereas if I did a smaller hole that was the correct size, um, they're, they're much easier to conceal. So I just wanna show you, this is a brand new nailer stock out of the box, and I wanna show you what it looks like when you overdrive a nail. So when you're overdriving a nail, the drive pin is going further into the material, and because of that, it's gonna create a larger hole because the drive pin tapers larger as it goes deeper. So let's just shoot a few here. So here you can see how wide that is. That's really overdriven. I've got that set way too deep. 
But um, I think you'll see that even if I make that a little less deep, we're still overdriving. Let me go even a little bit less. So now we're not set deep enough at all. And basically the whole point of this video is that the way these nail guns come stock from, oops, the way they come stock from the store, it's very hard to find the sweet spot so that you get consistent nail depth setting all the time. I'm gonna show you how to correct that and make it so that you're always leaving a small hole regardless of how deep you drive the nail. Okay, now ideally you want to be leaving a nail hole the same size as the nail head. And with this gun, to get it adjusted perfectly so that it's leaving the same size hole as the nail head, you have to be driving it at the exact depth all the time. That's not practical because your air compressor is gonna fluctuate in air pressure and you're also at times gonna be holding the nailer at different angles which are in turn gonna make that drive pin deeper or not as deep depending on how you're holding the gun. So that's just not ideal. We wanna be able to shoot nails and have the perfect size nail hole all the time. If you can just see here, I've got this one set pretty well perfectly. It's actually still maybe just a fuzz deep but if I do any less, I'll start leaving the nail head proud, uh, which is really gonna make the painter hate you because he's got to set all those nails. Um, if I rock this back a little bit, it'll reduce the depth a little. So you can see it was, that's the ideal size hole that you want, but it's very hard to get that exact. Now, let me show you the nail guns that I've been using for years. I've already modified these so that the drive pin works better. Uh, if you watch this, I'm gonna be shooting these much deeper and you'll see that it leaves the same size nail hole even going deep. So if you look at that, you can tell that nail is going super deep and yet somehow it's still leaving the same size hole. Let me show you how to make that modification. Okay, to make this modification, the first thing that we need to do is to be able to access the drive pin. So to do that, you're gonna connect your hose, you're gonna depress the tip, you're gonna pull the trigger, but do not let go of the trigger then. So now that drive pin is all the way out. I'm, I've got the trigger depressed still, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the air off. And what that does then is it leaves your drive pin up here in the forward position. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this new nailer now. Pull the hose off. And again, the drive pin is up here in the forward position. Now let me show you the difference here on why these two guns, the one I've been using for years, versus the new one are so different. So here's what I actually did, and this is an old school trick. I believe it was my buddy Justin told me about this years ago, and I've done it to my nail guns ever since. Let's get in here real close and look at these two drif different drive pins. This one is new. This is the one that I modified probably four or five years ago, and this is shot uh, hundreds of thousands of nails and it's never damaged or had any issues. But you'll see the shape. I filed this down with a nice rounded curve here so that this tip, this narrow portion of the drive pin is much narrower further up. And if you look over here, the way these come stock from the factory, you only have an extremely small area up here with this narrow portion of the drive pin and then it gets progressively wider the deeper you go. That's why on these nail holes here that are way overdriven, you have a super wide nail hole. Now this section here was what I shot with the new gun set at perfect depth. 
which means you can't be overdriving any further than about a sixteenth of an inch right there. Now if you come over and look at this drive pin, which I modified, I shot these nails much, much deeper. I mean, at least an eighth of an inch deep in there, and they're still the same size holes. The reason for that is because I filed this down. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. All right, so to start getting this modification, you wanna repeat the process that I showed to get the drive pin out, pop the air hose off. You may have to kind of try to grab that pin and pull it all the way out so that you've got complete access to it up here. You'll also notice I did uh, turn this little set wheel all the way until the uh, tip popped off. That way I've got access and it's not, I'm not bumping into that tip or anything. So we've got a little Dremel bit on here, nice little maybe eighth inch wide carbide cutter. That's all you really need. Key thing to remember is we're taking material off. We cannot put material back on. So just don't overdo it. Take your time, gradually make this modification and taper it down nicely um, and it'll work really well. So let's get into it. Okay, just finished up the new nailer. Let's take a look at these two drive pins. Um, you can say it's not perfect, but we just wanna make sure it's tapering down and kind of evenly going out. This was the old one, this is the new one. Uh, again, I know I'm gonna have people who are gonna be concerned about the drive pin breaking because you're modifying it. Uh, this was recommended to me by old school carpenters and I've done it uh, basically since I started trimming houses and I've never had one of these drive pins break. So uh, yeah, I guess do it at your own risk. I'm sure it voids the warranty if you do make this modification, but let's shoot some nails and see what it looks like now. Okay, we're back in business. I've got my tip put back on, my rubber tip is on here. Let me show you how this looks. A good question is, what is the right depth to set your nail gun at? And the answer is really, you want it deep enough to, count it, to account for fluctuations in your air pressure that are gonna come from your air compressor as you run down the tank, and then also to account for those times where you're not driving the nail perfectly square, perpendicular, to your surface, sometimes you're gonna to have to put nails in at a slight angle, and you still want those nails to be driven in far enough that you don't have to get out your nail set to reset them. So if we look here, I'm driving those at a pretty decent depth, and you'll see that the nail uh, hole is just about the same size as the nail head, maybe slightly higher. Um, I think on my old gun, I actually had it filed down even smaller. I didn't go quite that small this time around. Um, but again, we want to be able to even angle this a little bit and still have it drive the nail just fine. So that's where this modification is key. It's going to allow all your nail holes to look the same size as the nail head. To me, that looks really professional. If I walk into a house and I see a bunch of trim that's just been blasted onto the wall with a overdriven with a bunch of wide nail holes. It drives me absolutely insane. And as professionals, if we're going to be making a half million holes for the painter to fill per nail gun, you know, over the four years or so that we might be using it, let's at least take the 10 minutes to make the modification so that those holes can be as small as possible. That's how I think about it. So I hope that helps. This is a must have modification for me to all of my 15 gauge nailers. All right, last modification that I wanna show you to make these nailers really great. You'll notice both of these older nailers have a rafter hook on the side. This is a Senko rafter hook. They're maybe like eight bucks off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the video description below. 
uh, but these are just super nice. You can hang them off of your tool belt, you can hang them off the ladder, off of scaffolding, etc. and it just makes the gun a lot more versatile. These nailers don't come with any kind of a rafter hook. A little tip, um, this is what you're gonna get when you order one of these, and I like to put it off to the side. I'm right-handed, so I like to be able to hang it on my tool belt like this as I'm working. Um, and I like mine to stay stationary. I don't like it to move around. You'll see here on this nailer, I actually have it, it's loose, and I just find that really annoying, so I wouldn't recommend that. If you don't want it to move around all over the place, use a washer whenever you install your air fitting. Um, put the rafter hook on, put a washer on, thread your air fitting in there, and then it'll stay nice and stiff so that you know when you're working and you wanna hang it, that, that rafter hook is always in the perfect position to drop down there onto your tool belt or ladder or whatever. So, hope you guys found this video helpful. It's a little review slash trade tips for these uh, Hitachi Metabo nailers, fantastic nailers. I'd recommend them if you're looking for a 15 gauge nailer. Uh, hope this helps, we'll see you on the next video.